So for the electronic capacitors, above it you will find its value as you can see 100 microfarad. Okay, this black part is for is negative and here we have positive. So the electronic capacitor capacitor is polarized capacitor. This is other type of 10 ohm capacitors. Those capacitors also are polarized capacitors. As you can see, we have C605, its reference in the motherboard. So the same as these capacitors. Here we have transistors. So those components can be transistors or MOSFETs. Here we have Q, okay? We will find out using the schematic or by using the multimeter. This is the Zener diode, as you can see. Here we have the cathode, and here we have the anode, or positive terminal. We have T37 for diode. This is crystal, as you can see we have X5. Its reference can be X or Y for the crystal, or quartz. So here we have ceramic capacitors. All these are ceramic capacitors, as you can see. see. Pay attention, you should always distinguish between, between the ceramic capacitors and inductors. For example, this is inductor, not ceramic capacitor. And this is ceramic capacitor, also this is ceramic capacitor. As you can see here, we have C488 for this, this small one. We have C489 for the other ceramic capacitor. And here we have L12 for this. So this is inductor, not ceramic capacitor. So this brown color like this is for inductors. If you use the multimeter, you will get a continuity for this inductor or coil. So over here we have network resistors or resistors network. So basically a resistors network is a combination of many resistors. As you can see here, its reference is RN, means resistor network. We use this kind of resistor in order to gain space in the motherboard. As you can see, its value is 2220 ohms. Okay, so we have three twos, as you can see, the same for this also, always the third number refer to zeros, the number of zeros. Here we have another network resistor, but for this equal to 1 to 10,000 ohm or 10k, okay, because 3 will be 3 zeros. So here, as you can see, the map for this component we have here RN resistor network okay and we have Q this is a MOSFET as you can see this is the MOSFET Q after that we have a resistor network as you can see RN okay after that we have capacitor ceramic capacitor this is it after that we have a resistor this is it after that we have a ceramic capacitor but it is not connected here we have resistor, so ceramic capacitor, resistor, and then ceramic capacitor here, but it is not connected, and then resistor, here we have resistor, and then ceramic capacitor. And here we have three inductors, three coil or inductors, as you can see, L8, L7, L6. So this is how you can find the reference for each component in the motherboard. So let's see another example. For example, for these references, we have an arrow here, means these references refer to this component. As you can see, we have C, 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 two capacitors. We have other capacitors here. Then we have another capacitor and resistor and then capacitor, capacitor, resistor, capacitor. Okay, as you can see. So it's easy to read the motherboard references. So always you can use the same working principle. So here this is a crystal. Here we have X4, the reference for crystal. Its value is 25,000 kilohertz or 25 megahertz. 
Here we have the TMAG IC. This IC is the controller for the RG45 connector. If you have any issue with your Ethernet connector, you should check this IC. So here basically this is the CPU circuit or the processor circuit. Here we have a fuse, okay? This is a fuse. As you can see we have F1. And here we have two ceramic capacitors, C, C, as you can see. Here we have four MOSFETs and two inductors. This is a diode, a protection diode. We have D21. And here we have two switches near to the power jack. Here we have two MOSFETs, Q1 and Q2. This is... This is the back of the CPU circuit. Here we have other four MOSFETs. This is the controller IC, the processor or the CPU controller IC. And here we have four tantalum capacitors for filtering purposes. This is basically the drain here, four pins connected together. As you can see in the path in the motherboard and then connected to the source, to these three pins. And here we have the gate. Here we have the drain four pins connected together and then connected to the other the drain of the other MOSFET here we have the source three pins connected together this is the gate and the source connected to the drain of the fourth MOSFET and then the source as you can see connected directly to the ground here we have another crystal oscillator we have X1 near to the ICH or input output controller hub so the value of this crystal oscillator, X1, as you can see here, equal to 32.768 kilohertz or 32 megahertz. Here we have another crystal oscillator, X3, near to the super IO or super input output. The IC that is responsible for the whole power in the motherboard, U22. This is this triangle, means this is the pin number one, and this is the BIOS, as you can see. Always you will find the BIOS usually near to the super ion. So this mark, white mark, means this is the pin number one. This BIOS is already replaced. I already replaced this BIOS and I fixed that this motherboard. This is basically the CMOS battery or real-time clock, as you can see here in the motherboard, RTC1 means real-time clock. This connector is for speaker, as you can see here we have speaker 1. And this connector is for the touchpad, as you can see, we have touchpad 1. And this is for the keyboard, we have KB1. And basically this is the DC connector, as you can see we have DC1. This connector connected to the power jack of the motherboard. This connector is for LCD, as you can see, for the screen or the monitor. LCD. This is basically the Bluetooth connector, as you can see. Blue 1. This connector is for the FA, we have FA1, to cool down the processor. And this is the battery connector. We have BAT1. And here we have the protection diode D42. This is basically current sense resistor. Okay, Current sense resistor. We have another current sense resistor. As you can see. R305. We have USB. As you can see. The reference for the USB. This is connector 1394. Here we have zero means the value of this inductor or network resistor is zero, as you can see, and its reference is ill. Basically, they considered this network resistor as inductor. Here, basically, this is an IC. Here we have another IC, as you can see, Maxim, and its reference, as you can see, is 8744. Here we have another Maxim, okay? Basically, this ICs are controller. Here we have two MOSFETs, okay, two MOSFETs, okay, and here we have inductors. This is another inductor. Here we have electrolytic capacitor. 
we have another electrolytic capacitor. This is tantalum capacitor. We have another tantalum capacitor, as you can see. And those are ceramic capacitors, or PF capacitors, or picofarad capacitors. So, as you can see, for the IC, this triangle means the pin number 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Here also we have a triangle, means this is the pin number 1, okay? And this triangle, or this white dot, as you can see, means the place of the pin number 1. But for the MOSFETs, as you can see, here we have this white line, or this dot, means this is the pin number 1, okay? As you can see, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Here we have drain, okay? So, 3 pins for source, and 4 pins for drain, and this pin is for the gate. Here also, as you can see, we have a white line. Here we have the dot, means here we have the pin number 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. So for the MOSFET, always the pin number 1 is the source. 3 pins for source, 4 pins for drain, and the other pin for the gate. This is basically inductors, or coils. Its reference is L in the motherboard, as you can see, L22, L23, as you can see. The inductor has just two terminals. It is just a wire. And those are resistors, as you can see. This is basically resistors. Okay? As you can see, we have R, its reference in the motherboard. We have four R and we have four resistors over here. 